And uh, Robert Wilson here on behalf of the uh, plaintiffs that filed a lawsuit against the uh, Monica Alcantara, the chair of the party. And based on media reports and things I've seen in social media, there's been some inaccurate statements made factually and that are untrue. And I have never spoken to the media. No one's called. Well, I have been contacted by the current. They did contact me. I gave a statement. The media has intended to ignore the issues that are really at play with this case. Now, I want to clear the record. First, we did not sue the party itself. The party was not sued. The only party that was part of this case, other than the clients that I represented, which were precinct chairs, the secretary, and treasurer, was Monica Alcantara individually and as chair of the party. We did not sue the party itself. Further, when we had a hearing on this originally with the case, temporary restraining order itself, about a month and a half ago, to put on our case, the court at that time, and I have a copy of the order here for you as well, the court at that time found that she violated state law, granted a restraining order to restrain her to continue to violate state law because she had improperly removed precinct chairs. That was the evidence that was presented at that hearing, and there was concern expressed by the judge from the bench. And it's kind of sad to say that we have to come to court and assert our rights to be precinct chairs of the party. We shouldn't have to do that. If you're a precinct chair and you're legally there, you should not be removed. You shouldn't have the chair coming after you removed. We're all Democrats. We are not to be divided. We should be together to create division. When we came to the court and had a hearing on Monday, she agreed to reinstate the precinct chairs that she improperly tried to remove. And then she came out after the fact and said that's a win for the party. How is that a win by the party? That is not a win. That's a loss. You're creating division. You're creating angst among all the members of the party. That is not a win. It's a loss. Who actually won Monday are the precinct chairs that were reinstated. Yeah. Not, not the party itself. The party is losing because of the division that she's creating. Because she saw that the court was going to grant a temporary injunction against her, she agreed to reinstate the chair she should not have removed in the first place. Yeah. And I have I've talked to some of them, not all, but I do not believe any of them have received an apology from the chair of this party that they've been reinstated, and she apologizes for attempting to remove them, which she shouldn't have done. And I have the court order over here with me right now where you can read it for yourself, and it's public record, it's through these states what I'm giving you today. That's the facts. That's the facts as they are. It's not a spin that I'm trying to put on it. It's the actual facts of what happened with this case and the facts that the evidence that presented the court. And I'm sorry that we have to be here and put the judge through this, put all the parties through this that are before you today, bring her into court, and make her do the right thing. So, uh, thank you for coming out today to hear kind of what I believe are the facts and evidence of the case, not some spin you're trying to put on it as a win for your side, which is not how you do it. That's not the party is your side. The party includes everyone that's standing here for you today. Right. So, thank you all for your time and effort. Y'all put in this and taking time to get here and have a good right decision. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, in an intent to bring down the Democratic Party, I was taken out as precinct uh, chair for 2023. I am Sergio Contreras. I am Sergio Contreras for the precinct. And uh, the, the board decided to bring me back in. Okay, so we're in back again. Precinct 20, 2023. Good afternoon, good morning. My name is Juan Arueta Hernandez. I'm the precinct chair for 2096. I had already been accepted in 2096 before I got removed, and we, that was part of the reason I came to fight for this, this, this law to be enforced. It is sad when a precinct the chairwoman of the party is not following the law, and this is the law. Right. And this is what it's supposed to be. We are fishing chairs. We got elected or appointed. She cannot remove us without due process. And I'm glad we won the case. And it's time to get back to work. We got a lot to do in 2020. Thank you very much for being here.
everybody, my name is Stephen Huerta. Precinct Chair 2090. I am the co-chair of the Bear County Democratic Party Rules Committee. What I have to tell you today is unwavering dedication, commitment, time, honoring the code of democracy and fighting for our people is all that I have ever given to this county and to my community. I have sweat in the streets to give people a voice. I have struggled with those who are currently struggling as I struggle with them. And yet all party chairs seek to try to remove me, a dedicated political party activist for Barrow County who has done nothing but given unconditionally to this community. And I ask all Democratic Party voters to come to our side, the side of progress, because we will not surrender our position. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. My name is Garrett Ormondo. I am the duly elected secretary of the Bear County Democratic Party. I was re-elected in June. Uh, last year, 2018, and I just had some quick comments that I wanted to go over about what happened here. What's going on and why did we end up here at the courthouse seeking justice? And it was basically a full frontal attack by the chair on members of our own party. And it's a chair who ran on the platform of inclusion, but instead immediately embarked on this oppressive purge, and it was based on discriminatory factors which have been egged on by a small and, and pretty vicious faction in the party. Now, today, we wanted to, as you've heard, celebrate this victory over that oppression and discrimination, and we're here to stand up and declare that we're, it's never happened before, and it's not going to happen on our watch. It's not going to be accepted, yeah. Yeah. and we don't yeah. want to have to do this ever again. Never again. All right, were it not for our actions in the court as a means of last resort, having exhausted all other avenues, we wouldn't have to be here standing right now, and this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the court's decision. So we are very happy with the judicial outcome, which the party chairs violations of state law as determined in the restraining order issued by Judge Harl was acknowledged and accepted by the chair in agreeing to reinstate the affected precinct chairs. I would like to congratulate them right now. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I do want to clarify that Judge Stryker did decline to rule on whether the attempted removals of the treasurer and secretary were proper and citing a lack of jurisdiction in the court. So as such, it falls back to the rules, the Bear County Democratic Party rules. And as the rules uh, clearly state, we remain the treasurer and secretary in full compliance with those Bear County Democratic Party continuing rules. Additionally, uh, just to inform everybody, Judge Stryker required the Chair Alcantara to take an administered, sworn oath to faithfully uphold the rules of the state and local parties and state law, which she did so solemnly swear to do under penalty of immediate reissuance of restraining order should she fail to do so. So I'd like to just close uh, with some words of wisdom from our County Commissioner Calvert, who has stated in reference to this unfortunate situation, and I quote, politics is the business of addition, not subtraction. We need to find ways to keep and grow precinct chairs, raise money, win elections, and bring people together which we intend to do. And I want to thank you. Yeah. Here, 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 here. Victor Gonzalez. I'm Richard Gonzalez. I'm a precinct chair. Uh, I'm also on the Texas Democratic Executive Committee, Senate District 19, also part of the United States. I'm a Democrat in Senate District 19. When all this was happening, I got and I called Monica Gatera that we needed to get together and put our differences aside. She never responded to me. I sent her emails, nothing. Tommy Calvert put out a letter that he was very concerned about this issue. Uh, about a couple of days ago, she put out another letter that she talked to the DA that said that everything that the commissioner had said was not true. 
commissioner had to send out another letter where he called the district attorney's office to verify all the things that he had said were correct, which makes her a liar. All right. Now we have this court issue that we just resolved, and I, as a member of the state Democratic Executive Committee, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the state Democratic Committee uh, meeting next month in Austin, and I'm going to ask for her resignation and the, and the, the chair, you know, also to take action from the state party. So that's all. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any questions? What was the total number of uh, uh, years it was reinstated? 25 to 30. Yeah. How many were reinstated? There were about 30 some that were uh, purged and only about 80. There are some cases pending and possible further action. Yeah, so there's still a whole bunch of others that didn't have the resources to come and take up this issue. One thing that I think you all should know is that there was a violation of the American Disability Act. There is a precinct here by the name of Alan Flores, who is in a wheelchair, has been a uh, part of the civil service, and uh, he's a precinct. There's about three other ones that are also a fall under the American Disability Act. Do you have any questions? Any questions? What? I've got a matter i got to attend to. Do you have any questions for me? Who no. is she? Who is she? I'm saying she. Monica Alcantara. And why did she, um, why'd she do it? Why did she remove the precinct chairs? Uh, well, I believe that, well, there's politics behind it, but I, I guess she wanted to get removed precinct chairs. I mean, I've heard the, 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 the term mentioned troublemakers uh, that she tried to go in. And that's not how you remove precincts here. Just sending them a letter, which is what she did. You can't do that legally. There's a state law about how you remove precincts here, and she didn't follow the state law. If I want to see who was removed, is there a, is there, is there a list? I mean, I, I have a right here if you want it. I do. Okay, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Any other questions? Is that document? I gave it to you. Yeah, I gave it to you. Any other questions? Everything you want to do, you can keep it even. Yeah, it's every violation. So, Garrett, uh, we were talking earlier, you mentioned that the state party rules and under the Bear County party rules, uh, you're, you are still going to be secretary, and I assume that means you'll show up at the next meeting. Yes. Could you talk a little bit about what the state rules and what the, the county rules say about the removal of the secretary? Sure. The, the state party rules, Texas Democratic Party rules, call for the creation of a secretary at the county CEC level. It's required. Um, that election was held last Janu uh, June uh, 12th. And there are statutory duties laid out in the Texas Democratic Party state rules. And um, they also state in that same section that the county CECs reserve the right to create their continuing rules as long as they are unanimously approved and then lodged officially with the Texas State Party. Our Bear County Democratic Party continuing rules have been in effect for, I believe, 10 years and more. I don't know the exact number. And there's never been a question or an issue around this situation. So this is kind of a first right now. But in those rules, there is, not in the state party, but in the, in the, and the two rules have to line up. If there's any discrepancy between local continuing rules and state party, uh, that can be contested. So, but we're not contesting the fact that there's a clause in the local party of her removal. There's a very specific process involved. Uh, and it's spelled out in the rules, which I have given all press members a copy of today to reference. And we have them posted on our website 24-7 for anybody to access to. That's at fairdemocrats.com. Uh, Are you concerned that if you show up for the next meeting, that even though those rules say what they do, that she and her allies will try to, to uh, 
shut the door in your face, and if that happens, what's 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 your recourse? Um, I, I I'm I, I'm aware that that is probably what's going to happen. Uh, I don't think that the doors will be shut on me. We're going to have to just kind of move forward and have the the CEC dialogue about this and 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 have a discussion about the rules, especially now that the uh, judge has required the chair to swear an oath to follow the Texas State Democratic Party rules as well as the local Bear County Democratic Party continuing rules. Uh, the, the rules are in place for a reason um, so that things aren't arbitrary. I can't just walk in and say, we're going to remove the chair tomorrow, you know, or you're going to come in and do this. So, we're gonna, so the, the, the rules are in place for a reason. It's a check and balance uh, on the uh, powers at the party. And they've been duly voted on, and, and, and we'll have that discussion. All right, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you, too. And I think there's a, there's something about the uh, continuing rules in there. Is that correct? Yes. Have you put a copy of the continuing yeah, I think he shared that. Yeah, yeah. we've got a copy. Yeah. There, yeah. yeah, really appreciate it, you guys. Spells it out. <laughs>